instrument Remember, for all posterior. instruments first me assume the clock position for the treatment area then my patient establish the patient chair and head position for the treatment area now my equipment adjust the light my do non-dominant hand establish retraction illumination or reflection with the mirror my dominant hand, modified pen grasp, thumb, index finger, and middle finger in the correct position. My finger rest, establish the fulcrum with your dominant hand. My adaptation, is this the correct end of the instrument? Adapt the leading third of the working end to the two surface. My angulation, close the face of the blade upon insertion as close to zero degrees as possible and open the face for a working stroke. My stroke, press against the tooth with the fulcrum finger and activate a pull stroke away from the junctional epithelium. Use a wrist rock for strength and control and pivot on the fulcrum finger and roll the handle between your fingers as you go around the two surfaces. The modified pen grasp. The modified pen grasp is the key to instrumentation. It allows for precise control of the working end, permits a wide range of movement, and facilitates good tactile sensitivity. An improper modified pen grasp will prevent proper adaptation, angulation, or stroke. Each time you pick up an instrument, check your modified pen grasp. Finger positioning for the modified pen grasp. The index finger and thumb hold the instrument handle and are opposite each other. The finger pads rest at or near the junction of the instrument handle and shank. The index finger and thumb should be positioned so that the fingers are in the same direction as the instrument end. Do not place the thumb at a 90 degree angle to the instrument. The fingers do not overlap. There is a tiny space between them. The fingers hold the instrument in a relaxed manner. If they are blanched, you are holding the instrument too tightly. The index finger and thumb curve outward from the handle in a C shape, making it easy to roll the instrument during instrumentation. If the fingers become flattened or go into a U shape, you are holding the instrument at the incorrect area of the finger pads. Some of you may find that your thumb easily goes into a U shape. Check the position of the thumb pad on the instrument. When you are rolling the instrument, the index finger and thumb are always in contact with the instrument. If your index finger or thumb come off the instrument when you roll the instrument, you will need to reassess the finger position on the instrument. The middle finger. The middle finger rests on the instrument shank. One side of the finger pad rests lightly on the instrument shank. The other side of the finger pad rests against or slightly overlaps the ring finger. The middle finger pad must be in contact with the instrument shank at all times. It may never be under the shank. This is a pen grasp. The middle finger is not used to hold the instrument. You should be able to lift the middle finger off the shank without dropping the instrument. The ring finger acts as a fulcrum, a support for the hand and instrument. The fingertip, not the pad of the dominant hand, balances firmly on the tooth to support the weight of the hand and instrument. It is held straight and upright to act as a straight, strong support beam for the hand. The fulcrum finger advances ahead of the other fingers in the grasp. The fulcrum should be within two to three teeth of the area being instrumented. The little finger rests against the ring finger in a relaxed manner and has no function in the grasp. Adaptation, angulation, and insertion. Adaptation is the position of the first one to two millimeters of the working end of the instrument against the tooth surface. 
This area of the working end must be in contact with the two surface throughout the instrumentation stroke. Only the leading section of the working end is in contact with the two surface. To determine the correct adaptation, you must first be familiar with each instrument and the correct working end. Notice the adaptation of this instrument to the surfaces to surface in this demo. The last one to two millimeters of the instrument are always in contact with the tooth. The tip does not come in contact with the tissue. For anterior teeth, you will be adapting the instrument from the midline to all surfaces towards you. Notice how she keeps the end of the instrument in contact with the tooth at all times. Then, using the other end of the instrument, adapting the instrument from the midline to all surfaces away from you. The technique is the same for both lingual and facial surfaces of anterior teeth. For posterior teeth, you will be adapting the instrument from the distal facial line angle to the distal contact and then from the distal facial line angle across the facial surfaces through the mesial contact. Again, notice how she keeps the last two millimeters of the instrument in contact with the tooth at all times. This technique is the same for both lingual and facial surfaces of posterior teeth. Angulation is the relationship between the cutting edge of the instrument and the tooth surface. Only instruments with cutting edges will need to be angulated. Since the cutting edge is placed beneath the gingival margin of the tooth, you can't visually see the angulation of the cutting edge. Therefore, the terminal shank of the instrument is used as a visual clue. For insertion of instruments with cutting edges, the face-to-tooth angulation should be as close to zero degrees as possible and never greater than 40 degrees. The terminal shank of the instrument is against the tooth. The fulcrum is lowered. The toe of the instrument is directed more downward. For working angulation, the face to tooth angulation should be between 45 and 90 degrees. The terminal end of the shank is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Rise up on the fulcrum finger. The toe of the instrument is now only slightly downward. Activation, pivot, and handle roll. Activation is the act of producing an instrument stroke. There are two types of strokes, assessment and working. An assessment stroke is a light stroke to determine tooth surface irregularities. The working stroke is a moderate to heavy stroke to remove tooth surface deposits. The stroke is controlled by your fulcrum. The fulcrum must be in contact with the tooth at all times and one to three teeth from the tooth you are instrumenting. Wrist motion or wrist rock. You will be rotating your hand and wrist as a unit to provide the power for the stroke. Watch as the clinician establishes the fulcrum and then rotates the hand and wrist as she moves the instrument across the tooth. Digital motion is not recommended for any other instrument other than the periodontal probe. If you find yourself using digital motion, you will not have the necessary strength to remove deposits. The fulcrum position is often incorrect, causing you to finger flex rather than wrist rock. 
Notice the difference in wrist rock versus digital motion in this anterior area. The repositioning of the fulcrum corrects that. Okay, assessment stroke. As you move the instrument, your fulcrum finger supports the weight of your hand and instrument. When you begin the stroke, press down slightly on your fulcrum finger and move the instrument in a smooth motion up and down on the tooth in a vertical or oblique direction. The stroke will be one to three millimeters in length in areas of tissue health. The working stroke. As you move the instrument, your fulcrum finger supports the weight of your hand and instrument. When you begin the stroke, press down firmly on your fulcrum finger and move the instrument in a smooth motion up and down on the tooth in a vertical or oblique direction. The stroke will be one to two millimeters in length. If you fly off the tooth, you did not stop the stroke by pressing down on your fulcrum. Watch the clinician as she demonstrates the assessment stroke and then the working stroke. For this demonstration, the clinician will not be wearing gloves. This enables you to see the blanching of the fulcrum on the working stroke and the lack of blanching on the assessment stroke. So we'll watch the assessment stroke first for a couple teeth and then she'll go back and do a working stroke for those same two teeth. It's a much smoother, more gliding stroke. She's feeling the su surface irregularities through the instrument tip. Now with the working stroke, notice how she places her fulcrum and presses down firmly on the fulcrum, uses a shorter stroke, much more powerful, again continuing the wrist motion. Pivot and handle roll. You will need to pivot the hand and arm to maintain adaptation as the working end moves around the tooth contours. Maintain a neutral wrist position as you pivot. The handle roll is the act of turning the instrument handle slightly between the thumb and index finger to readapt the working end to the tooth. Watch the clinician pivot on her fulcrum finger as she moves around the line angle into the proximal area. Watch as she moves the handle between the index finger and thumb to maintain the working angulation of the instrument. See how her pivot comes up and down as she goes to the proximal surface and turns. Watch how the instrument, not her arm, turns between her fingers.